Welcome to the Living Word. A ministry of Bethel Baptist Church located in the Greenfield, Indiana. The message today is brought to you by our pastor, Dr. Randall Parker. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed the service that's already in progress. Take your Bible and turn with me to Revelation chapter 21 this morning, if you would. Revelation chapter 21, and we're going to read a few verses there. And then asking God's help to bring you the message that God's laid upon our heart. I think every preacher who has preached any length of time develops, for whatever reason, a norm. And once in a while, God asks you to step out of that norm and to bring something different than what is the norm. And today, God has laid upon my heart just to preach a message that uh, I've never approached before, and yet feel very definite in his leadership. Revelation chapter 21, verse number 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, And be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor suffering, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. These words are true. I'm sorry. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Let's pray. Father, we don't know what ears the message will fall on, what hearts God have a need. But Lord, I know that uh, we're living in a troubled world, in a troubled time. And I know, God, that we're needy upon you. And sometimes, God, we just need something to help us over the next mile, to get us past the next circumstance. And Father, I pray this morning that if there are hearts here, God, that need help, I pray help would be given and received. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want you to look with me to a phrase found in verse number four. The Bible says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. I doubt there's anything more tender than the thought of wiping away tears. It's a great expression of love. I think most every parent in here at one time or another have picked a child up off the sidewalk after a bike wreck, skint knees, hurt feelings, And you've uh, wiped away tears. We've done that. Most of us have held some teenager after puppy love has destroyed them. Pat them on the back and say, you'll get over it. It'll be all right. Wipe away the tears. Some of us have dealt with adult children. 
divorce situation. Their heart's breaking. Your heart's breaking for them. And you wipe away tears. Some of us have dealt with adult parents that the inevitable facts of life has brought them to a place that they realize they can't do what they want to do. And we all shed some tears. You may be here today and say, Preacher, I'm not one of those people who cry. I never shed tears. I never weep. Sometimes it's harder to dry those tears on the inside than the ones you've wept on the outside. The Bible says there's coming a day when God will wipe away from our face every tear. Forgive me, I'm just... uh, a little bit soggy today. I look forward to a day when there won't be any more broken hearts. I look forward to a day when there won't be any more divorces. Won't be any more funerals. Won't be any more circumstances like that. Now, if God is going to wipe away all tears, then God is going to have to eliminate the cause for the tears. Let's read some of the causes for tears. Now, if I touch on something close to you today, It's okay for you to cry if I touch on something close to me. It's okay for me to cry. But one of these days, God's going to say, no more. The first thing that I've written down here that causes tears. Now, you may be sitting here as a young person today, and and you're just going to find it hard to relate, maybe. Well, I don't understand why you want to talk about things like that. One of these days you will. One of the causes for tears is grief and loss. Grief and loss. Look at verse number 4. The Bible says, There shall be no more death. There shall be no more death. Neither the sorrow that death produces. All of us have experienced the loss of someone, and it broke our hearts. Amen. If you've never experienced that, your day's coming. When the loss of someone that you love, it, there, there is no mend for it. There is no replacement for it. There is no easement from it except in Jesus Christ. And he says, one of these days, we won't have any more uh, uh, funerals. We'll not have any more viewings. There won't be any more trips to the cemetery because there'll be no more death. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? Thank God that there won't be any more news coming. They didn't make it. This past week, we've, we've gotten two reports of people that we know and were acquainted with and, and, and came through the, 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 the media that, that uh, uh, they, they, they passed away. They didn't make it. Amen. And, and uh, sometimes it's very close to your heart, and sometimes it's, it's, it's very close to your, to your own uh, circumstance. How many of you got people you went to high school with that are gone now? Amen. I have too. Do you know what? They were your age. Amen. 
And when we hear about death, it causes us to understand that we're not going to live forever in this life. But one of these days, he says, there'll be no more death. There'll be no more calls in the middle of the night. There'll be no more circumstances that that crush us and cause us to think that we don't know if we can take another breath, if we can lift our head again, if we'll ever smile again, if things will ever be like they were before again. But one day, God says, I'll wipe away the tears. Won't be any more of those because I have eliminated death. I don't know whether we're going to pay taxes in heaven or not. Somebody said the only certain things in this life, death and taxes. Well, I can tell you this, not going to be any death when we get there. Amen. I will eliminate death and the sorrow that comes with it. Now, I don't apologize for this. We do not sorrow as those who have no hope but we sorrow. We sorrow. And that's, that's okay. That's acceptable. That's as it should be. At, at, but one of these days, he says, there won't be any more death. I thank God for that. Look down there, if you would, please. The next cause for, for pain, or I'm sorry, for tears, uh, is often pain. In verse number four, neither shall there be any more pain. Now, Uh, It may be that you've lived a charmed life and you've never experienced suffering so severe that you wept. But can I tell you, many, many, many people have. And it's just so, it's so saddening. It's it's so uh, 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 heartbreaking to see people that are withering in pain and tears coming down their face. And how, how many, how many have you have ever said to a child, "If I could take it, I would," and you would, but you can't. And but in heaven there'll be no more pain. Amen. I noticed this morning there was a line at the water fountain. People taking Advil. I don't. I don't call it Advil. Uh, I call it life support. People that have chronic issues in their bodies. Well, can I tell you something? One of these days, we're going to be raised. And we're going to be changed. And we're going to have glorified bodies. Amen. Some of y'all, that means you get your hair back. <laughs> so, preacher, you don't know that. Yes, I do. Sin took your hair. I don't know whether it was yours or your father's, but somewhere down the line. Some of you going to get your waist back. but you won't get your pain back. Can you imagine getting up in the morning, 33 years old? So, preacher, why would you say that? Well, the Bible says that we're going to have a glorified body like his. He died when he was 33 years old. He said, preacher, I'd like to have a 21-year-old. I'll take a 33. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. I'll take a 33, not complain. But you know what? Pain is not restricted to older people. You go to Riley Hospital. You walk through there, and if you don't have come out with tears in your eyes, you got a hard heart. You go in there, and you see little children playing in those play areas, dragging helps to 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 move their body no hair on their head because of chemo playing in a in a sand box with a iv hole beside of them i'm going to tell you it'll be good that there won't be any more pain amen and you know what 
one thing that will help, if there's no pain, there won't be any lying or a whole lot less. Because how many times have somebody said, how you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, if nothing can change the situation, there's no need in complaining about it. So we just suffer through it and suffer through it. But one day, there won't be any more pain. There won't be any rest homes. Amen? There won't be any rehabilitation centers. There won't be any more emergency rooms. There won't be any more situations where people has to be medicated because of the problems that this body produces. I'm glad there'll be no more pain. Thirdly, this might be as important as any. I've just written down there won't be any regrets there. How many of us have ever shed tears because of bad decisions we made? Bad decisions we made. And we regret it with all of our heart, all, and it breaks our heart. We made bad decisions. We made bad choices. We're reaping bad consequences. And if you could do something about it, you would. But listen to what he says. For the former things are passed away. All those bad decisions, all those bad choices, the former things are gone. Amen. And you won't be grieving, you won't be weeping, you won't be hurt and broken because you're having to endure the consequences and and having the regrets of bad things coming into your life. There's things that happen to us that we'll never get over in this life. Oh, preacher, I've got that behind me. I know. To one night you can't sleep and it, you think about it. Oh, what might have been. Some poet wrote and said the strongest words of lip or pen. Oh, what might have been. And we have regrets and we have second thoughts and we have second guesses and we wish we could change things. And sometimes it brings tears to our eyes. But God said one of these days, all that's going to be gone. Remember the little toy, and I've used this and every preacher in the world's used this as an illustration. But the little toy we used to have, no, we don't have it anymore. Don't look for it on the shelf. It's not there. Because you don't have to have batteries. And it doesn't have two buttons for your thumbs. We had a toy that had a little clear plastic. And you wrote. And as you wrote it, it appeared there on top of the plastic. But then if you decided you didn't want that anymore, you just pull that plastic up. And it's gone. Don't tell me you don't have anything in your life you wish you could, and it's gone. You can't do it. But one of these days, God's going to say, what did we call that? That wasn't an Etch-A-Sketch, was it? Magic Slate? One of these days, God's going to say, let me see your Magic Slate. But, Lord, there's things there that just... If I could do different, let me see it. Lord, there's things there that you're going to see that I regret, and God knows that I've, let me see it. And he goes, all things are new. Old things have passed away. So, preacher, I don't have anything on my magic slate I wish was gone. Good for you. Liar. (laughs) Regrets will be taken. The former things, the former things, the things of your past, the things that's followed you, the things that that have hurt you, the things that have brought tears to your eyes. The Bible says 
are passed away. The fourth thing I find, it brings tears, failure, and disappointments. You ever had a failure? Huh? You ever had a marriage that came apart? You ever had children that did not and would not go the way that you would raised them to go? And you feel like, what did I do wrong? We weep over failures. We reap over disappointments. Sometimes we get the, the, the pink slip. We get a layoff. We get a financial setback. We have all these issues. And, and, and man, it just, you, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go from here? Well, let me tell you, God can help you here and now. But one of these days, there won't be any more of those failures. There won't be any more of those disappointments to break our heart. There won't be any more that confront us and we say, I don't know what I'm going to do. Where do I go from here? How can I get over this? One of these days, now I said a while ago, he said the former things are passed away. And then he said, behold, I make all things new. You're starting all over. Not only, now this is good. I love it. Not only does he take that magic slate and take all that's off? All that's there is erased. It's taken. And it's gone. But then he hands us a clean slate. And say the former things have passed away. Behold, you've got a new slate. You've got a new slate. Things are, things are going to be different now. Amen. There was a song written many years ago, and I can't quote the, the song, and I'm certainly not going to try to sing it. Say amen right there. But I only heard it a couple of times in all my life, and, and uh, uh, you, you could probably find it if you get on the Internet. I'm not going to take time to f- – can I take just a minute? I love Carolina barbecue. There is no taste like Carolina barbecue. And when I was in Florida last week, I ate Carolina barbecue in Florida. Stopped in the airport. Here's a great people. I just ate it yesterday, twice. <laughs> and a great big sign here, Carolina pit cook barbecue. I went in three times in a row. I ate barbecue. But Carolina barbecue has a different sauce. It's got a vinegar-based sauce. And I said to myself, i got to get a recipe. Where could I get a recipe? And it said, Google it. I Googled it. I've now got a recipe, and for $5, I'll share that recipe. <laughs> Michael could probably Google this song and come up with it. I think the name of the song was, If I Knew of a Land. And the verse says, this, if I knew of a land where there was no death or crying, if I knew of a land where there was no pain or suffering, if I knew of a land where we would never grow old, if I knew of a land where we would, and he just goes on and on and on. He says, if I knew of that land, I would sell everything I've got today and move to that place. The second verse of the song says, I know of a land where there's none of those things. And I don't have to sell everything I've got. One day the Lord's going to come and take me to that place. There won't be any failure and disappointment. He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I want you to notice in this text that there isn't any references to messenger angels. Did you notice that? I think Michael is, uh, no, Gabriel. I think it's Gabriel. It's called the messenger angel. Angel. God's always sending messages by him. It doesn't say that the, the Gabriel is going to come and tell you this. All this, the Bible says, God shall wipe away their tears. 
God says, I make all things new. God says, I'm going to do this. Lastly, one of the causes for tears is separation. Have you ever stood at the airport and watched people say goodbye and just embrace and weep? You ever stood at a family reunion when people are saying goodbye when they know they may not see each other again? Have you ever stood at the graveside when you're going to have to walk away and leave that loved one there? Well, one of these days, there will be no more separation. One of the most heart-wrenching, gut-wrenching things in the world is to have to say goodbye to someone. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The other day I was uh, talking to Brother Jerry here. And uh, Brother Jerry Shaw was sitting here. And we were getting ready to dismiss the service, if I remember it right. And I looked at Brother Jerry and I said, Brother Jerry, how do you say goodbye in Spanish? Anybody remember what he told me? Adios. He was leaving that weekend. I said, adios, Brother Jerry. There's no easy way to say goodbye. Later on, I said, well, Brother Jerry, if adios means goodbye, what does hasta la vista mean? See you later. Aren't you glad that we can take someone we love and we can say, I'll see you again. I'll see you again. I'm getting to the point in life that when I say goodbye to someone and some of the people that I say goodbye to, there's no guarantees. We'll see you next year. I don't know. We'll see you next year.